guys. Hi, thank you so much for stopping by today. I have just completed the Weekenders pattern for the RTB 101 dolls. This is a pattern that I actually created a while back, but I hesitated to put it out because the instructions for how to actually complete the construction of the cowl neck for the top and the dress was a little bit hard to understand. But since I started this video series and people have been able to see the sewing construction, I think it's really helped with some of these more tricky conceptual ideas. It's not that it's that hard, it's just hard to read and understand. So this is the actual pattern. It's actually gonna be released today on FletcherPatternCompany.com. And these are two of the outfits that you can make with the pattern. So I already put on an, an additional video showing how to make these leggings and it was super easy. It just takes a few minutes but the actual construction of the cowl neck top and dress was the part that I was concerned that people would be challenged with so I'm excited that today I finished it this is actually how the dress turned out on Grace Marie Fitzpatrick and I think she's wearing it pretty well if you stay with me till the end of the video then I will show you a trick of how to make the most amazing hemline that will actually maybe change the way you do doll clothes knits going forward so stay with me till the end and I'll give you that top secret idea of how to finish that product so here we go dress now the pattern itself um, is not hard to complete and once you know the tricks to it it's really really easy and quite a pleasure to sew but if you haven't sewn a cowl neck before the pieces are very confusing and it's not intuitive so let's just look at them real quickly and then we'll get started with our project so one thing i would um recommend is when anytime you're working with stretchy fabric or knits that you make sure that you pin your pattern pieces to the fabric very well you want to make sure that you get a nice clean cut of that pattern piece and that the material is not shifting as you're cutting out the pieces um, so i've already done that once you have your pattern cut out you want to make sure that you're cutting it so that the stretch is on the horizontal um, uh, the most stretch if it's a two or four way stretch knit in this case i use this really beautiful melon colored fabric and it's a poly spandex blend and the stretch is here on the horizontal um, there's only three pattern pieces that go to the cowl top or to the cowl dress and that's what we're going to look at now so this is the actual cowl dress front and as you can see if you're not familiar with that that's a very strange looking piece so your mind doesn't immediately necessarily understand how to sew that and that's where I'm going to come in and make it very easy for you this is the actual back of the dress looks pretty comfortable and familiar and then this is the actual um, back dress self-facing so what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the two raw edges for the inside since the dress is self-faced and we're going to go ahead and zigzag along that self-facing front edge and also along the self-facing back edge so that's going to be step one and we'll do that now Now, I'm using a cotton-covered polyester thread, which is useful for several types of fabric, including a stretch knit. And I'm also gonna use just a really slight uh, zigzag stitch and a very narrow stitch length for the construction of the dress. But for actually finishing the edge of the self-facing, I'm gonna use a little bit wider zigzag stitch. And this isn't gonna fray, but it's just a nice way to finish the garment. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Also, the needle that I have in my sewing machine is a ballpoint needle, which is recommended for um, stretchy fabrics. You could also use a jersey needle. If you need a little bit more information about uh, sewing with knits, I have a video uh, available in my video library. I will leave the link in the description below. All right, I'm gonna set the uh, dress front piece aside and work with back piece and the back facing. So with right sides together for the next step, I'm gonna just go ahead and place the facing onto the actual back of the dress. I'm gonna pin that there and I'm gonna actually sew around the neck edge and also the armhole edge on both sides.
Now that I have those seams sewn, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and trim that seam allowance down. And if I need to, I'm gonna clip into the curved edges. And then I'm gonna turn the dress uh, back right with the facing to the inside of the dress. All right, now that we have our back facing turned into the garment, we're gonna go ahead and sew the back to the front at the shoulder seam. When we look, as you look at our pattern piece, you'll notice that there's two notches here. If you look at where the pattern actually folds, this straight edge is actually gonna be what forms the cowl at the front of the top or the dress. So when you're referring to uh, pinning the back to the front at the shoulder, we're referring to this first cut in above that armhole edge and it's marked on the pattern as A. So if you're looking at the dress here, we're gonna pin the back to the front with right sides together at that lower cut. So that's gonna be our first stitch. All right, so we have our first shoulder basted in, and I just want to bring it to your attention that the finished edge of the back of the dress is hitting that corner right at the V of the two notches that we saw. And now to the left side, we have a quarter of an inch uh, available for that seam allowance, which is going to be part of the front arm hole seam. So I'm going to go ahead and baste in the second shoulder. And we're looking at the side here, and I'm going to do it right to the corner of this notched edge. All right, now that we have both of our shoulders basted back to front, what we're gonna do with the front facing is we're actually gonna fold it over the back facing. Now that notched edge is actually gonna sandwich the back shoulder seam in between, and we're gonna pin along the front armhole opening. So to display it on the pattern piece, what we're gonna do is we have it stitched together at the back at the A's as we already saw. What we're gonna do with the front facing of the dress is we're just gonna fold it in half at that notched edge. Once we have that folded and the back is in between, we're gonna sew right along the shoulder seam and around the front armhole edge. And that's gonna put the front to the back at the shoulder seam. So let's do that stitch now. All right, so here's where we are. What we're gonna do now is this is the front armhole edge that, um, that we just sewed. We're gonna clip in towards that curved edge and trim that seam allowance. And then I'll show you how cool that turned out at the shoulder. And our cowl is actually formed. So this is almost finished. So that trick alone is the one that really can be challenging for this pattern. But as you can see, we have the self-facing done and the shoulders are done. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sew the dress front to the dress back at the side seam. When we do that, we're gonna go ahead and open up the facings to match them together. And then we're gonna sew the side seam uh, from the facing to the hem edge. So you're gonna match that underarm seam and go ahead and pin it 
all the way down to the to the end of the dress and we're gonna sew that and then we'll repeat it on the other side. One thing you may remember from a previous video is when you're working with knits, sometimes it's really helpful to place the pins parallel to the um, seam edge. It will keep the fabric piece on the bottom from pulling away from that seam edge. All right, now that we have the side seams sewn on the dress, we're actually almost finished. All we really need to do is add the hem. And this is where I'm gonna show you this trick I learned that you might find helpful as well. So stay tuned for the hem for sure. But before we actually do the hem, I'm gonna go ahead and take in the seam allowance with my pinking shears. You could just use your regular scissors to cut it down, but I prefer how it looks when you decrease the bulk of the side seam using pinking shears. So I'm gonna cut those seams now, and then I'm gonna give you that tip for the hem of the knit dress. All right, so we have our seams trimmed with those pinking shears and now we're gonna turn the dress right side out. Uh, I think it's gonna turn out pretty fantastic and I really, really think this pattern, once you get used to that shoulder turn, can be something that you can whip up pretty quickly and there's just so many beautiful knits available to make this cowl draped neck. So it's gonna basically finish like this and it's a garment that definitely looks better on the doll than it does off the doll but you can see that it has a pretty nice drape to the cowl right there so the trick here is to decide how you want to hem the dress now you know you can hem it the way you hem everything just turn it up a quarter of an inch and take a very slight zigzag or you could even try it a lot a little bit longer straight stitch but what i find when working with knits is that i don't like the way the hem looks on garments it always just is a little bit puckery or it just doesn't lay as flat as i I like. So I found this really cool way to do it. And maybe you'll decide that this is something that you want to try too. So for example, this is one that's hemmed um, just with a, a machine stitch. So you can see it doesn't look terrible, but I don't think it looks great. Um, and again, I did the pinking shears to decrease the bulk on the inside of the top. All right, now that we have the dress completely constructed and the last step is gonna be to do that hemline, I wanna show you a super easy and excellent trick that I learned along the way. I found this product at Hobby Lobby and it's called Soft Stretch Ultra Fusible Web. So what this does versus um, a different type of hem tape is it's very stretchy and it's very light. So it doesn't create any bulk in the garment. So I can use this to fuse the hem edge of the dress without stitching it at all, which creates a nice clean finish when you're looking at the front of the dress. So what I've gone ahead to do is just um, cut it down to a quarter inch size. It has paper on one side and the fusible webbing is on the other. So I'm just gonna iron it onto the hem edge peel the tape back and then press it onto itself and iron it one more time. And I'll show you how the finished product looks. So well, let's do that now. I think it's easiest to do it by actually covering one of the side seams with the seam open. That's a good place to start. Um, that way you're not worried about running out of tape. All right, 
Once you have it um, ironed on, you're gonna head and just peel that tape back. And as you can see, there's a light layer of adhesive right at the hem edge of the fabric, but it's not creating any bulk and the fabric seems to move really well. So this is the perfect type. Now I did think I used the ultra, I did think I used a different heat bond when I did this, but it did create a bulk. So you wanna be really cautious about which one you pick and make sure you get the right one. So there you go, that's the actual hemline. Now I think that looks so much better than a, a crumply little zigzag stitch, but that's just my preference. And again, you can finish the edge of the garment any way that you like, but this is just an alternative. So as a reminder, that's called adhesive ultra fusible bond. And I'll leave a link to it in the description below uh, in case you're looking for a similar type product. So let's go ahead and get this doll, this dress on one of the Grace dolls. We'll take a couple of final pictures and we'll see how our cowl neck turned out. And again, this is from the Weekenders pattern. And this is a pattern that's gonna be put out for the RTB 101 dolls today. So if you're interested in this, I'll leave a link to our website below, as well as a link to the leggings um, instructional tutorial that's also available. So let's go get our doll and get a few pictures. All right, so we made it to the end of another video. I hope that you find that trick of using that fusible adhesive for a hemline instead of stitching to be very helpful. If you have a chance to use it, please share your experience in the comment section below. As always, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and share this video with your friends if you like the content or you think it might be interesting to them. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and if there's certain things you'd like to see me sew going forward, please put that in the comment section as well as I look forward providing content that's interesting and helpful to you. Thank you so much for being with me and I'll see you in the next video.